So welcome to my video on solving logarithmic equations. And I wrote some properties for you here on the right hand side of the screen in blue. And I'm going to explain these properties more in depth when we're actually using them in this particular problem. Uh, but I think it's going to make a lot more sense if we just get uh, started right away with this example uh, before I actually explain what these properties actually mean and then how we use them. So here in this example we have the log base 8 of x is equal to 1 minus the log base 8 of x plus 2. And the first thing that you want to do when solving logarithmic equations is you want to bring all the log terms to one side and you want to bring everything else to the other side. So this is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to bring this minus log base 8 of x plus 2. I'm going to bring it over to the left hand side. Um, so all my log terms are on the left and everything else is on the right. So since there's a negative sign in front of this log term, I'm going to add the log base 8 of x plus 2 to both sides. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the left hand side. I'm going to add the log base 8 of x plus 2. So now notice on the right hand side the negative log of x plus 2 and the positive log of x plus 2 cancel out. And on the left hand side we still have the log base 8 of x and we just added the log base 8 of x plus 2 and on the right hand side the only thing that we're left with is a positive 1. Okay so now we have got all our log terms on the left hand side we got everything else on the right hand side and the next thing that we need to do is we need to rewrite both these log terms as one single log. And this is where we need to use the properties that I wrote for you here on the right hand side. Uh, whenever you have two logs being added with each other, you can use the, the first property that I wrote for you here in blue. It says that the log of A plus the log of B can be rewritten as one single log and inside the parentheses you just need to multiply A times B. So you can imagine that this x inside of our first parentheses is our a. And you can imagine that this x plus 2 inside of our second parentheses is our b. And now I'm going to rewrite these two logs using multiplication since these two logs are being added with each other. Uh, so these two logs can be rewritten as one single log with the same base of 8. And now we need to multiply our a times our b. Our a, which is x, is going to be multiplied by our b, which is x plus 2. So now we've rewritten these two logs as one single log, and our right side of the equation stays exactly the same. And now we can move on to our next step. Our next step is we want to change this log equation into a exponential equation. And in order to do this, you can use these equations I wrote for you here in blue. Uh, but I like to use a simpler method where I use counterclockwise arrows. So if we start with the base of 8 and draw a counterclockwise arrow to the 1, and then from the 1 we draw another counterclockwise arrow to the inside of our parentheses, which is x times x plus 2. And we can use these counterclockwise arrows to change this into an exponential equation. Uh, we start with our 8, and after the 8, we follow our counterclockwise arrow to the 1. So we draw a 1 in the exponent position. And after our 1, we follow our counterclockwise arrow to the inside of the parentheses, which is just x times x plus 2. So we rewrite x times x plus 2 on the right-hand side of the equation. So now we have changed this log equation into an exponential equation, uh, but before we move on, let's simplify this a little bit. Um, on the left-hand side, we have 8 to the 1 power, uh, which is just 8. And on the right-hand side, we can distribute. We have x times x, which is just x squared, and we have x times 2, which is just positive 2x. So notice how we have an x squared term, and this is a quadratic equation. Um, so what I'm going to do to solve this quadratic equation is I'm going to make everything equal to 0 and then factor. 
So in order to make the left side equal to 0, I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. So moving on to the next step, notice on the left-hand side of the equation, we have a positive 8 and a negative 8, which cancel out. And we're left with 0 on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we have x squared plus 2x minus 8. So now I'm going to factor the right-hand side of the equation. I know that my first two terms are going to be x and x, because x multiplied by x gives me my x squared term. And now I need to find two numbers that multiply and give me negative 8 and also add or subtract to positive 2. So if I take positive 4 and negative 2, if we multiply positive 4 times negative 2, that gives me negative 8. And positive 4 plus negative 2 gives me my positive 2. Now I need to set both parentheses equal to 0. So x plus 4 equals 0, and x minus 2 equals 0. In this first equation, if I subtract 4 from both sides, I get x is equal to negative 4. And if I add 2 to both sides, this equation, I get x is equal to positive 2. So here we have x equals negative 4 and x equals 2. Are these going to be our two solutions to our logarithmic equation? Uh, the answer to that question is we don't know yet. We need to double check and make sure that these solutions don't make any of the logarithms a negative number inside the parentheses. So I'm going to copy and paste the original logarithmic equation and make sure that these two solutions don't make the inside of the logarithms negative. So here I recopied the original logarithmic equation that we started out with, and I'm going to double check our first solution, x equals negative 4, uh, to make sure that it doesn't make the inside of the logs negative. If we plug in negative 4 for x, instead of having the log of x, we're going to have the log of negative 4. You can never have a negative number inside of your logarithm. So that solution is not valid because negative 4 makes the inside of this first logarithm negative. So because x equals negative 4 makes the inside of this log negative, it can't be a solution, and we can cross it out. So now let's double check our solution x equals 2. If we plug that in for x in our first log, instead of having the log of x, we're going to have the log of 2. Uh, 2 is a positive number, so that's OK. In our second log, instead of having the log of x plus 2, we're going to have the log of 2 plus 2, which is just the log of 4. 4 is a positive number, um, so that's all right. So we know the solution x equals 2 is valid because the inside of the logs were all positive. So this solution x equals 2 is our only solution to this logarithmic equation.